Hey, Broke Gamer here. Welcome back. Um, on the next uh, big purchase I got was a Retron 5, the emulator console that can play everything from your Nintendo Game Boy all the way up to my Super Nintendo and everything in between. And so that's what I thought it would do. Uh, so I managed to pick it up on eBay, Res relatively cheap. I mean, it's been out for, I think, over a year or two now. And uh, as what I said on the box, it played them all. And uh, when I plugged it all in, the games look fantastic. I'm not a great impression with the lag uh, on some of the inputs on some of the games. But um, yeah, I, I, as I say, it did what it did on the set on the box. And I, and I thought, yay, this is it. I won't have to buy any more consoles for a while. I can just concentrate on getting games and playing them. And then a couple of, well, I was about a month into it, so I started getting errors. Nothing but errors all the time. Uh, I failed to dump ROM. Um, was an unknown cartridge. And this started happening on every single game I started playing. Even the games that played on it before. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I thought, oh, great. I bought a broken bloody console off eBay. My dumbass. But, uh, yeah, then I started to look over it. Uh, I'm not too bad with technical minded. I mean, I've looked at uh, quite a few other YouTube videos on how to clean consoles and stuff. And I thought, but I couldn't find anything on the Retron 5 on how to uh, try and sort out this problem. As I say, it just wasn't recognising all the cartridges that I had. I mean, it still played one or two. So I thought, well, the system can't be broken entirely. But that's what I thought. But then I suddenly went, sod it. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's just take the whole damn thing apart. Of which I went, took off the screws, padoing, and I took the damn thing apart. Now, I looked at it and I went, right, what could be the most obvious, simple explanation? Now, connections on old uh, cartridges. Oh, so I just started checking all the pins and the pins. And so you see a couple of little wonky ones in here. And I didn't think that could be it. So what I ended up doing... Such the most basic, simple repair that I can think of. I just tightened up these screws. And funnily enough, they, all of them were very loose. Obviously, because uh, if you know, know this system and you have one, you know how difficult it is just to pull the bloody cartridges in and out. Now, of course, after a bit of time, these came loose. And of course, then they came loose, lost the connection under here to the actual main motherboard. And I thought, hey, great. <laughs> Tightened them all up, plopped it all back in, and hey presto, my Retrol 5 was working again. And I thought, yay! And so then I just carried on playing. And now, of course, I keep on, uh, as I say, I just keep the damn thing open like this, just in case it goes loose again. And uh, I thought that was great. But then, of course, I don't know what it is with uh, Hyperlink, but they must obviously build really crappy crummy stuff and i say everybody knows the review on these this crappy wireless controller uncomfortable horrible something that you know really really shouldn't be that you know clicky ugh, horrible but of course then i think i was only about three weeks into using um this system the controller just went kaput won't take a charge won't do anything so now what I have to do is I plug in the original uh, Nintendo, Super Nintendo controller in there and I have to use that to go over everything. But since I don't like this damn thing, it's not too much of a big problem for me, as I say. But yeah, um, at the end of it, I would recommend it uh, to someone that uh, is you know casually into gaming like myself i'm not like the world's biggest gamer where i have to play but i do enjoy some of my classics and this just it just mark a little stop gap i mean if you want to buy now a super nintendo uh even at the retron stores uh, around they're about 60 dollars even on ebay you can get around 50 dollars and then of course you've got a nintendo you've got the sega genesis and the game boy and everything if you add that all up it comes up to a pretty penny. So well, um, I thought this was a great deal when you can play them all uh, on one system. Now, compatibility-wise, it's played about close to about 90% of the games. Um, some of them, um, 
you know, I've even taken apart some of the games to clean, uh, which has helped on the connections. Um, but I could just can't figure out how to update this system. I mean, on the back of this system, he's got a little memory card slot right there. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how the hell you're meant to bloody update this system so I can get more of the games to work. But all in all, I thought it was a great purchase and it sits quite happily uh, next door to my TV. I still have a couple of other consoles underneath, so it's, uh, you know, I really enjoyed the uh, console itself. Uh, the picture quality that comes out is fantastic. I mean, some people like uh, the old uh, CRT TVs. I mean, there's all the filters you can do, of course, on the main menu, but who the hell cares? I want crystal clear pictures. That's what I want these days. None of this uh, extra scan lines or anything like that. But uh, yeah, the sound, the colors, it's great. All uh, pumping out on the 720p and on my HD TV. Um, yeah, so uh, I would actually, I think I would recommend it, but uh, just keep a note on uh, the old uh, screws on the inside. Hopefully uh, it will keep it uh, going. And uh, yeah, as like I say, that's, uh, that was my next uh, purchase I got. And uh, hopefully I'll be running onto another one very soon. Thank you.